Good evening, friends. I thought I'd st start off and show you what I painted today. Um, did this still life with my Monday group, just another gal and I. It was all things that she brought. Um, the pottery is a piece her grandson made. Wonderful handmade kind of a scallop top. Two pumpkins, two pears, a wine bottle, and uh, she brought that printed fabric. And there's leaves behind here and some berries. Um, when you're doing a painting, whether it's from life like this was or you painted from a photo, I just wanted to say that you get to the point where you really should put the photo away, probably stop looking at the setup. I was so busy trying to duplicate what I saw there and I feel like I did pretty well. Um, now I've gotten it home and I've gotten to look at it better, which is Again, now I'm looking at the painting, see how it stands on its own. Um, I feel these two pumpkins are like bookends. The stems are different, but they mirror each other pretty much in size and shape. Don't care for the berries there at all. Um, you didn't see the pot, but that was what the pot was shaped like. And you can see the wine bottle. I really like the shadow I got suggesting the wine bottle. So mostly I do like it. Um, this way I handled the fabric. Again, this bothers me. Um, I'm going to take that out <laughs> right now with my finger. No, no particular reason. I'm going to get rid of that. Actually, we could just use a little rubber knife. So, you know, what do I want to do to change it? Again, it's not a bad painting, um, so I'm probably going to change one of these pumpkins to a larger pumpkin. As you can tell, they were small based on the size of the pears, so I probably will enlarge one. And again, we're getting rid of that. I may, um, I'm thinking I might pull a little vine out this way that comes maybe from behind this pumpkin, maybe with some leaves, you know. I'm thinking. Um, I could run some leaves. I could either push one of these pumpkins back or enlarge one. You know, I, I just feel like they need to be different from each other. So, because I have so much going over here, I may enlarge this pumpkin. You know, I'm thinking maybe we'll make it bigger. And uh, I'm not doing it right now. I'm just playing around here. You know, so maybe we'll enlarge this pumpkin. And uh, again, maybe run a vine out here with some leaves. You know, maybe even one over the pumpkin. So, um, you know, again, I have, I have to see how it stands all by itself, not looking at the image. You know, I feel a little bad to change up the pot because this was kind of the way the pot looked. Uh, this young man does pottery and um, it had like stuff running down and the scalloped edge. It's a very cool piece. I don't know how it reads to the eye. You know, whether it would be better off with something simpler, but um, so again, I feel like I'm going to enlarge this guy. Um, it, start there, you know, and at least, like I said, bring a vine out with maybe some leaves and. Uh, and then take a look at it again. I handled, I think, most of the elements in it really well, but there's more to it than that. You know, you've got to um, it's got to work as a painting all on its own regardless of what your image was. So, yeah, I like that shadow there. I really like the way I handled that. And I can always, you know, use my little rubber knife and cut in and expose some of my tone. So again, that's that's really different. So but I like a lot about it. I um, I just thought I'd share that with you. Show you. See it's it's different, but it's painterly, which is what I'm always shooting for. My the way I handle the tablecloth is impressionistic. Um, I'm, you know, never would be a person that's going to paint every little detail they see there. 
So anyway, she let me bring home these gnarly pears. Let me show you. They're wonderful, wonderful. She took them off her tree. I'm trying to get you low enough I can even show it to you. Here we go. Here we go. You know, when you go grocery shopping, you can't find pear. I can't. I can't at my grocery find pears with leaves. It's so funny when you're shopping for props anyway. You know, you're playing with pears and setting them. I'm setting them in rows. I'm seeing if the, the bottom of them is flat enough to sit. I'm sure if anybody ever sees me, they probably think I'm nuts. So, but I am painting over an old painting. I think I might have done this last year around Christmas. Um, it's a five by seven panel. I scraped it down really good so there's no little hunks hanging up. Um, never tried to sell it. <laughs> Maybe could have. It's just been laying around here all this time. So um, that's usually all I do to kind of prep one. Some people might oil it. Um, I just usually scrape it down, make sure there's no hunks there. And we're going to use our view catcher tonight. I have set it for what I think looks to be an approximate of a five by seven. All right, so let's have fun. I just, I got these pears out of my bag and I thought, oh my gosh, I have to paint them again before they, before they die on me, right? She has a pear tree, so like I said, she went out and cut these down, cut off some limbs. All right, let's look through there. Quite obviously, we'll be running that stem up and off because um, it, you know, I can't fit it all in there. Yeah, like I said, we'll be running that off. What I, what I find really fun about this is the leaves, those wonderful leaves. And I've turned one, so we've got the, we're looking at the bottom of it. This would be one that you might even want to do that, you know, just wipe some burnt sienna or some color over the whole thing and kind of cover up your image and then you could wipe out and kind of start again so it wasn't so distracting, you know. I will probably miss my orange, the tone that I usually use because it's nice to scrape into these little vines and uh, that orange is really nice. And I'm kind of blocking in the leaf shape. I've got the light kind of coming from this front corner. I'm wondering if I ought to try to move it a little left. I'd love to get more of a, a bit of a shadow. That's better. I can see a shadow now if I move it a little more to the left. All right, let's have some fun. I may try to work a lot with a somewhat bigger brush so it comes out pretty painterly in the end. I'm going to mix up some, uh, the pears are yellow, so I'm going to take some cad yellow medium, put some white in it, get something lighter. I'm just going to come up with, um, like I usually do, maybe like three values here. I'm putting a little uh, transparent red oxide into some of that yellow because there's some areas that look like that on there. I've got some areas that have a little bit of a shadow. So we'll put a little blue in, which definitely turns it green, and then I'll kill it with a little red. I 
I like pears. I find people like pears, you know. I've sold a lot of pear paintings. And we're going to try this bigger brush and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to start out. There's a, a shadow here behind my leaf. Okay, that's the only area that is what I would consider somewhat darker. Even though um, lemon yellow is a cool yellow, it works nice. Something about it, it kind of still gives you the feel, feel of a light. I don't have any of that on here yet, but we might. I'll show you. Here's a little lemon yellow. That's lemon yellow, which is my cool yellow, but it really There's a leaf going to be right here on top of that shadow. I should have got some more transparent red oxide out, apparently. I'm scraping around trying to come up with some there. Yeah, I really enjoyed that setup that, uh, like I said, she brought all those items in. And there were several of us <laughs> giving our opinion as to how to set it up, you know. Um, I don't know on my own exactly what I might have come up with, but it probably would have been somewhat different, you know. See the difference between the cool and the warm yellow? I'm going to change that up. I think we are going to switch to a different brush to block in some of these leaves. And we'll start out with uh, ultramarine and Indian yellow, which is a very dark transparent green. And let's see if we see anything that dark. Some of the leaves you're looking at the back, some of them we're looking at the front. This one here is fairly dark. And then I see a bit of a dark one back here. Yeah, I'm seeing the back of um, several of them, which are really make for a very cool green, very light green. Okay, now that's got to look like a leaf against that pear, so. Let's make it a little more green. Though it is very cool.
there's one way over here. And it can throw you off when you're painting over another painting. I mean, again, that's why it might do you well to do something to the whole thing before you start. I'm, I'm just kind of ignoring it. And then there's some dead leaves here too. Not sure how we feel about those. We'll just try it though. Put a little transparent red oxide in them. She bought a brought a branch a couple I don't know maybe it was a week ago off of that pear tree and uh, where's that laying now I painted that on a little let me see if I can grab it to show you I painted that on a little canvas they're actually pears but they look a bit like lemons see it's a little tiny canvas look at how the, I love all those leaves but it doesn't matter what they are what you think they are it's a yellow fruit so I'm going to take that probably to my show this this Sunday's my show at King's High School if you live in the area. Um, I've done, you know, I don't do outside shows. I do inside shows, and I've always got to set up the night before. She's got us setting up that morning, so they open up at 6.30. Bark not getting there at 6.30. It starts at 10, so I figure I get there about 8.30, and... I'll get set up in time. <laughs> worst comes to worst, I'm tagging stuff when people come through in the beginning, and I don't think that's a problem either. So I guess the upside is I'll be in and out in one day. All right, let's let's block in the background and add a kind of cut into some of this stuff and. Uh, Gonna get some more transparent red oxide out here. Love that color, can you tell? I use it a lot. I use it to sketch and I throw it into different colors. Like right now for the background, I made a, a green and then I'm gonna throw some of the transparent red oxide in it. And some white. So it's kind of a you know gray green. I think it's nice. Which eh, now that I'm just starting to put that on there, I'm thinking, do I want to go green? I have all these green leaves. No, I didn't really think that through, did I? Maybe we'll throw a little red in there. Add a pull a little more purpley. Yeah, we probably don't want it. Um, I like that color, so I wasn't thinking that out really. All right. Yeah, I know you got a lot of glare because I'm brushing sideways. Probably even hard for you to tell. We'll brush those strokes down in the end.
still pretty green, isn't it? Let's put a little more red on it. some of this off. I'm, I'm just feeling though maybe this color is a little muddy. I think we might do best with a something that leans more toward purple. You know, or even blue because uh, with the yellow pears to make it less confusing too to get you know that background off of here. All right, now we can focus more on what we're doing here. Again, I could have uh, covered it all up to begin with, but I wouldn't have wanted to put any white in there. All right, so let's look a little bit better at, now that we've gotten rid of that, like our pear sh shapes and stuff. see and I want to see the top of that pair because that's where our little let's get a little small brush here because that's where our stem comes out of you think I would have had enough painting today right I just love it I, I never get tired of it I'd say as I was unpacking my stuff, they sent me home with these pears, and it's like, oh man, I gotta paint those pears again, right? I don't wanna just throw them away, they're just wonderful. tiny tiny little stems that come off of the big one and they look lighter in color I'm looking at those I want to make sure you see them there's one that comes over here there's that one there's one way up here comes down.
I said if I had my orange tone under there like I usually do, you can see where that would be handy for these little tiny, tiny leaves we could, you know, cut into this. I do think even though we made the whole background the same color, I do want a shadow in here. like this dark edge that I ended up with there. All right, let's go back to looking at these leaves now. We were supposed to paint out tomorrow for the last time of the year, and it's supposed to be high of about 44 and low in the 20s tonight. So sadly, we're done for the year. I really love plein air painting. I find I like it more all the time. So I said it before, but I might get out and do some plein air car painting this winter. I wouldn't mind painting a snow scene if I could get parked where I could see it, you know. That's the tricky thing. Now I'm not seeing any, um, there's a spot there I think we just didn't cover, but I'm not seeing any real highlights, you know, like a glowing highlight any place. Like I said, I think that's just a case we just didn't get covered completely. Yeah, I'm not seeing, you know, like any areas where I would take white and, uh, I'm 
feeling like here's a case right where looking at the object versus looking at the painting I think it might improve the painting if some of these really cool light leaves weren't so cool and light you know and if they were turned over they wouldn't be it's because I'm seeing the back side of them so There is another leaf coming off over here, but it's a dead brown leaf, and I don't know that it would improve the painting. You know, before we started, we talked about that, do we? You know, comes a time to quit looking at the at the setup and quit looking at the photograph. So. Okay, so what would improve it? I feel like the shadow should be darker. And I'm, I may just, we'll see. I may just use that kind of purple color, probably. Make it a little cooler because we have this space over here, this empty space. I think it needs more of a shadow. kind of like the way we handled that, just kind of loose. I'm cleaning out my brush real well here. I'm going to, I think, we'll see if we like it or not. I'm going to take some of the lemon, just the lemon, and brighten up this pear a little bit maybe. We'll see if we like that in the end. want to make sure that uh, you can see the top of this pair. And we kind of lost our shadow under this leaf, so We'll put that back. Don't know why I dirtied that up, but we did.
think I'm going to try um, to hit the edge of this leaf that's between the pairs. Just to explain a little more. So it feels like it's turning. Trick or treaters tomorrow night. Um, gonna be chilly for them. I kind of want to go to my daughter's because she has like a couple hundred. I sometimes have none, but I don't know if I want to go out in the cold, so we'll think about it. If you're an acrylic painter, you know, you could speckle stuff on there. Not so easy, easy to do with oils, but um, you could splatter it. I think that works nice on pears. What do we think? Cut into that pear shape a little bit. Again, even though I see no highlights, let's try just a little bit to see what we think. You know, if a light's it's going to hit up in about the same place. Again, I'm not seeing that over there, but I'm doing it, and then we'll see what we think of it. Stand, I mean, my little stem stand out a little more. That one's a little chunky. I mean, you could just go crazy, you know, adding lots and, you know, lots and lots of detail. It just depends. Do you, right? We were talking about that today, the gal I was painting with, just how different we, like I like to do a la prima, which is all in one time. I like things painterly and generally, I might go back and tweak them, but you know me, I'm generally done. Or she likes to let the first layer dry and get her drawing on and come back and glaze and, you know, she might, well, you know, a lot of people go at it for months. I just, that's not me, I would lose interest. Do kind of a lost edge over there. All right. Hopefully that reads like a leaf in the middle there because I, would, I wouldn't have spaced them apart if it weren't for the leaf connecting them. So. Let me get you out in front. Put our little mat on like always and try that. All right, there it is. So the background is kind of, again, 
a kind of a purple tint to it because I think that works nice with the yellow and the shadow there is very purple. We'll decide, maybe too much. But this could have been all palette knife. Um, this is small enough, I mean, you know, with a palette knife, you know, your leaves would stand out more. I don't have enough paint on there to make much of a difference, but um, this would be a good subject for a palette knife painting. I'm playing around here, getting some darker color on there. But again, this would be a good subject, I think, really nice to do with a, the whole thing with a palette knife would be fun. This is the leaf that we rolled the edge. quit playing with it. I'm going to look at it. Um, about 45 minutes. Like I said, I have found that people like pear paintings. I've always, they've always sold pretty well for me. The stem, I want to darken it. It was kind of lost. I think it's not bad. I mean, I like the way the leaves pull the pairs together and one in front of the other, so the composition's not bad. And the stem runs up and off. Yeah, I don't see a lot more that I'm just going to leave it alone and look at it because I better to do that. Stop early rather than late. All right, thanks for joining me. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't done that. You get sick of hearing me say that. Doesn't cost you a thing, and I won't ever bother you. All right, watch for me next time. You have a wonderful evening.